If you're wondering how to get stunning detail photos during an engagement session or on a wedding day, then check out this video. Welcome back to the camera bag essentials video series. By the end of this video, you'll have a better idea of whether or not it's time for you to buy a macro lens for your photography business. But before we jump into that, we want to introduce ourselves. I'm Hunter. And I'm Sarah. And we're Hunter and Sarah Photography, a husband and wife professional wedding photography team. We're also educators, and our goal is to help photographers build strong foundations in both their businesses and their personal lives so that they can run profitable and sustainable photography businesses. So last week, we continued our Camera Bag Essentials video series by introducing you guys to the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 telephoto zoom lens. Now, in case we haven't mentioned it so far in this series, this whole video series is more or less in the same order of importance that we believe an aspiring wedding photographer should be building their camera bag. So if you haven't watched any of, those, any of the other videos, if you don't own a prime lens or you don't own any zoom lenses, then we'd recommend you go ahead and go back and watch some of those videos before you watch this one. This week, we're moving on to a new category of lenses that we haven't talked about yet, macro lenses. We often see beginner photographers making the same mistake with detail photos. So we're going to talk about a lens that can up your detail photo game, but also to discuss ways to still honor your client's detail photos if you just aren't quite ready to purchase a macro lens yet. So before we even jump into that, what is a macro lens? So a macro lens, or as they're sometimes called a micro lens, is a specialized prime lens that's used for getting details and really close-up shots, often of small objects like flowers, insects, or in our case, engagement rings. And most lenses have a what's called a minimum focus distance of like a few feet or even more. A macro lens often has a minimum focus distance of just a couple of inches. Yeah. This is just a fancy way of saying that you can get right up close to your subject and still get the image in focus. And if that still doesn't make a ton of intuitive sense, next time you have your camera in your hand and you're looking through your viewfinder, just go ahead and put your hand in front of your lens and you'll realize that your lens can't really focus until your hand is probably a few feet away from the front of your lens. Whereas when you put on a macro lens, it's usually less than a foot, you know, maybe only eight or 10 inches and your camera can start to get your hand in focus. Yeah. At the end of the day, macro lenses allow photographers to get really beautiful photos of even the smallest details like the photos that you see here. And another thing that's unique about a macro lens is the ring on the outside of the lens that manually adjusts your focus, this guy right here, is much wider than on most prime lenses because the nature of macro photography, you do often find yourself shooting in manual focus as opposed to just using your camera's autofocus feature like you do most of the time you shoot portraits. Yeah. And because macro lenses allow you to capture such tight photos with a dreamy, shallow depth of field, you need to get right up close to your subjects and be very intentional about where you focus. That's why Hunter often ends up crouched down or even lying down when he takes macro shots. I am guilty of that, but I swear it helps. Um, but <laughs> all this is great information, but the big question is when do we actually even use our macro lens? We basically answer that question with one word, details. Our macro lens usually starts the day on Hunter's camera as he photographs our couple's details, and that's honestly all we really use it for. After I'm done shooting details on a wedding day, usually first thing in the morning, the macro lens pretty much goes back in the camera bag and stays there for the rest of the day. Now, if we do take it out on an engagement session, it's usually about halfway through as our couple is changing from outfit number one into outfit number two. We'll just grab the engagement ring and snap a few photos while they're changing. But if for whatever reason we don't have time for that or the location doesn't allow it or they only do one outfit, then the macro lens just kind of stays in our camera bag and we don't even take it out for a portrait session. Yeah. So. If we only use our macro lens to capture a handful of portraits during an engagement session or on a wedding day, is it really even worth buying a macro lens? And to answer that question, it honestly depends on where you are in your photography business. We didn't own a macro lens for the first year or two of our wedding photography business. We just took photos kind of similar to this one on the left that you see here and figured this was a good enough representation of our couple's details, at least to get us through for now. However, once we actually purchased a macro lens and saw the kind of detail shots that were possible, we realized how much more of a high-end and luxury vibe these images delivered. The entire purpose of ring shots is to showcase the tiniest detail of the ring, which has such sentimental value to our couples. So in this photo on the left, you can barely even see the ring. We just don't even think that these photos are worth taking the time to shoot. 
Now, if you're just getting started in your portrait or wedding photography business, then an expensive high-end macro lens is honestly a luxury and probably not one that you need right now. So our advice would be learn from our mistake, skip the super far away ring shot that you shot with a prime lens where it's only you know, five for 10% of the frame and just capture what we call interaction-based detail photos like this one. Um, you'll notice it still showcases the ring. You can still see the ring. You can still tell that our bride here is wearing a ring, but it's, the, it's more focused on the interaction that actually gives the ring meaning. And you can get a photo like this with whatever prime lens you're already shooting portraits with. Yeah, and even now that we own a macro lens, we still take the time to capture and deliver these interactive detail portraits like that. But if you wanna shoot higher end weddings, our experience has honestly been that detail photos become more and more important as you charge more and more for your services. High-end detail photos like these are one way that your work can and should stand above the portfolio of a beginner photographer, which is necessary if you do wanna charge more premium prices. So if you fall into the category of photographers who are ready to purchase a macro lens, then you're probably wondering which macro lens should you buy? And as always, there is good news, and that is that you have a range of options, really depending on how much you're willing to spend. But as a general rule, the longer the focal length on a macro lens, so as you go from 40 to 80 to 100 millimeters, the lens is just gonna get more expensive. And that's because longer focal lengths allow you to get even tighter shots of smaller objects. And since our main objective as wedding and portrait photographers with a macro lens is to shoot those teeny tiny wedding rings, you'll want something with a decent amount of zoom. So on the Nikon side of things, there are F 2.8 macro lenses ranging from like three to $900 for DSLR cameras and 700 to 1,000 for mirrorless cameras. And like we mentioned, basically you just pay more as you get a longer focal length. Personally, in the early days of our wedding photography business, we opted to save a little money and we purchased a Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens that we're still using today. Although to be fair, the only reason we're still using this uh, third party lens is because the Nikon mirrorless lenses that just came out in the last year or so, they were on back order for the last like six or eight months right up until this week. So I expect we'll probably be moving to one of those soon only because this was a great lens while we were shooting with DSLR cam cameras and while it still takes great images the autofocus is very finicky with mirrorless cameras so we're hoping to switch over to full mirrorless very soon but that's it yeah thank you guys so much for watching our hope is that this video has really helped you understand how you can best spend your hard-earned photography dollars in a way that's going to be an investment in the future of your business and if you want more helpful free content for photographers then we'd encourage you to join uh the hunter and sarah face photography education community on Facebook. The link is below. And like we mentioned earlier, this video is only about halfway through a 10 part series. It's all about camera gear for growing portrait and wedding photographers. So if you have missed any of those videos, go check them out. And we always love to ask to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good stuff so that you don't miss any of the future videos. Yeah, and if you're ready to, you know, go ahead and purchase a macro lens, whether it's, you know, the DSLR or the mirrorless version, we would be honored if you would use our affiliate link in the description below. You pay the same that you would on Amazon. We just get a small cut as a thank you for making this video. And finally, if you want an even deeper dive into any of these lenses, then we would encourage you to go ahead and check out the written kind of longer, more extensive version of this video on the HSP blog. Link for all of these things is below. All right. Thanks guys. See you next week. See you next week.